Hello everyone, in this video we'll discuss about vibrometers. Now vibrometers or seismometers, they are basically the seismic instruments which measure the displacement of vibrating body, right? So basically the construction of vibrometers is something like this, that we have got a mass which is caged and it is connected to the vibrating body, right? So with the displacement of the uh, base or the vibrating body, the mass, it also vibrates. And these seismic instruments are basically the instruments which have mass, a spring and a damper to, which helps in measuring the vibration of any system. So the mass with a spring and a damper and the movement of mass is the displacement is a function of time denoted by x and the movement of the base which is connected to vibrating body is given by uh, the displacement y which is again the function of time t so we are talking about the relative displacement so that we are denoting by z which is x minus y so if we draw the free body diagram of the mass we can see if displacement is x minus y velocity will also be the velocity of uh, that means x dot minus y dot and acceleration will be x double dot minus y double dot so if the movement of mass is in this direction which is mass into acceleration and the damping force and the sorry the damping force and the spring force they are acting in the opposite direction so this is the equation that we get right and in this equation if we subtract minus m by double dot on both hands it won't change the equation and the equation will get in this form right so we have already calculated that the steady state solution so this steady state solution is given on the basis of uh, you, you have already started about the forced damped vibration. So this solution is coming from there. So the value of Z we get is this, right? So we want to find the ratio of Z upon Y. It will be R square from this equation, right? It will be R square upon 1 minus R square whole square minus 2 zeta R whole square raised to the power 1 by now, in case of vibrometers, this ratio is almost equal to 1. That means the function of Zt is given by y sine omega t minus phi. So, if we look at this equation, right, which says that z upon y is almost equivalent to 1. So, what exactly it means? It means that the relative displacement between the mass and the base, right, that means z which is equal to x minus y is almost equal to y that means the relative displacement is almost equal to the displacement of the base of the vibrating body which means that zt motion right and yt motion initially what was happening there was this phase lag right so if this y z is equal to y there is no phase lag and the recorded displacement it will lag behind the displacement measured by some time phi upon omega right but because we are saying that this uh, vibration is in the form of the simple harmonic motion so this lag will not have much imp uh, you know difference or it is not of much importance for study but what is important is that if this ratio z upon y is equal to 1 that means r which is omega upon omega n this value has to be large right now omega is fixed right that means the value of omega for any vibrating system we are saying that this value is fixed which means what we can change we can vary the natural frequency of the vibrating system and for r to be large omega n has to be very low right and what is omega n it is under root s upon m so for omega n to be very less or to be less what we need we want the mass to be the value of mass to be high and the spring of low stiffness has to be used. So if we say that the large mass has to be used which means that the instrument will be very bulky. Are you understanding that if this r has to be large omega n has to be small to make omega n small 
the mass of the body this mass that we are using this mass has to be large and this is going to make the system very bulky therefore vibrometers are not used much these days right laser vibrometers are used but this type of systems are not much into use if you plot a graph between z upon y and omega upon omega n we see that the range of vibrometer is from 3 to 5 and the ratio of z upon y we have already discussed it is somewhat equal to 1 so this is the range in which the vibrometer it works so we plot a graph between the frequency ratio which is omega upon omega n and the phase angle phi we see that when omega upon omega n the r is 0 the phase angle is also 0 as the frequency ratio is increasing the phase angle is also increasing and when frequency ratio is 1 we see that the phase angle is what it is 90 degree and you see up to the value 3 this phase angle it it is what it is increasing up to that 180 degree and vibrometers are actually working uh, in the range of like greater than or equal to 3 omega upon omega n so we see that in most of the cases beyond this value the phase angle will be 180 degree 